What is up guys? It is Tuesday, April 27th, and today is the Pro Series launch day. Uh, spent the morning at the all new headquarters at Labrada. Uh, we did a Facebook and Instagram and YouTube live out of the new gym. Uh, really looking forward to uh, showing all that more as the weeks go on and we really fill the gym out and kind of get it complete and set up the way we want it. But uh, anyways, couldn't be more excited about how this morning went. Uh, you know, really did have the whole team there, um, you know, both Labrada employees and, you know, my personal squad. So it was really awesome just having all of the people responsible, you know, for my success and, you know, bringing this product line to market, you know, there today. So uh, big, big, but from the bottom of my heart, thank you to everyone that was involved in bringing that, that launch to fruition today. Uh, right when we got done with that launch, we went and ate pre-workout and then came here to Legacy Barbells to train pull. Um, Definitely into a video in the coming weeks where Brian and I sit down and really and truly in detail break down the split. Um, right now we're training push, pull, arms, legs off, but with A and B variations of the push, the pull, and the leg days. So um, very much so, it's kind of one of those things we're having to feather the volume right now to really keep recovery where it needs to be. And that's something that's going to become even more important in the coming weeks is, you know, I really get to the point where I have to start doing cardio, I have to be in a caloric deficit, recovery will go down, it's, just, it's inevitable. So. Definitely into a video kind of detailing the, uh, the exercises and the thought process behind the split we're training on. But for now, all you need to know is today was pull B, which means we had rack pulls, banded rack pulls today. So um, that was, you know, we had a three movement day today. We did straight arms if you want to count it, four movements. But, you know, one arm lat pull downs, three hard working sets there. Went to the rack pulls, did one top set and one back off set, both to absolute failure. And then went to the dumbbells and did two sets of absolute failure dumbbell rows and left the gym. You know, so that's three, four, five, six, seven working sets today for back. And uh, I am absolutely fried. So that puts it in perspective, I guess. Never understood people saying they do 15 or 20 sets for something. Basically, the next 12 weeks is bodybuilding. Um, there's, you know, if I'm traveling at all, which is very, very rare inside of, you know, 12 weeks, it's, you know, specifically for bodybuilding. Every variable will be controlled, you know, it really is, you know, time to, you know, buckle down and, you know, turn off the distractions. Not that I'm really ever distracted with anything uh, when it comes to it, but, you know, it's just time for hyper-focus. So, um, I'm really looking forward to having you all along in the coming weeks for these. Um, you know, every single time I've done a show, I've done one of these prep series, except for the first show I ever did. So, you know, the Europa, Nationals, uh, Junior USA's, Tampa, and the Olympia. You know, I feel like we've gotten better and better and better at doing them, and you know, more and more and more people have checked them out. You know, which is a huge, huge blessing. So, I feel very fortunate to be in the position to where you know we're going to bring you another prep series and and hopefully build on our past successes and learn from our past failures. Uh, that being said, uh, since this is the first one of the prep, if you could please in the comments leave any kind of you know direction for us. You know, whether you know you want regular question and answer portions in the YouTube videos. Whether you want, you know, to hear more about the biomechanics of the training that we're doing and, you know, the exercise selection, or on the other side, if you just want me to shut up and just, you know, just get to it. Um, you know, anything like that. You know, we really are all open ears. We want to show you all what you all want to see. You know, I really do feel like we have a really cool thing going on right now, um, you know, between all the people that we have, you know, it's in Houston training daily, you know, the support system that, you know, we have all behind us. You know, it really is a... You know, clicking on all cylinders, you know, special feeling that we have going on right now. And we're looking forward to sharing it with y'all. Uh, I'll be doing my own prep series. Liv will be doing her own prep series. Brian will be doing his own prep series. And a lot of the incredible athletes that we signed to the Labrador Pro Series will be bringing their own content as well. So I know there's been a bit of a drought uh, in terms of YouTube content, but that is about to be over, and it will be over for the rest of the year. Promise you all that. What's up, guys? So just finished training push here at Species Gym. Uh, currently sitting at right outside of 11 weeks out, right? Sure. 11 weeks out, and then he's coming up on 13 out from his national qualifier and then on to North Americans for him is the plan. So, um, not that it ever isn't serious, but uh, at this point I can definitely say we've uh, fully settled back into uh, 
you know, business mode, if you will, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's, it's we're having fun with it, but it's very, very, very serious at this point. So, um, it's, something it's different for sure. Yeah. So, you know, something that we wanted to talk about in this first video is something that uh, him and I both get asked ad nauseum in person. I get asked all the time uh, in the Q and A's when I do them. Um, you know, honestly, I feel like it's like a really hot topic just in general these days, and that is. What split do we train on? If you've kept up with either of us for any length of time, you know we train on a modified push-pull leg split. Um, I guess first and foremost, what do I mean by modified? Modified being uh, we tried doing a true push-pull leg split with the alternating focus on the leg day between quad and hamstrings. And uh, what we ran into was the fact that I'm trying to bring up my back, so we wanted to be rack pulling consistently. And uh, basically not having any days in between, you know, training back and pulling and then having to train legs and do compounds for legs, uh, ran ourselves into the dirt really quick. So, you know, this is probably about a year, year and a half ago now that we tried that. And, uh, you know, we then went to having an off day, you know, in between the uh, pull and the leg day and it worked well, but we like being in the gym. And uh, it was right about the time that I just came back from my bicep surgery so we decided instead of a rest day we're going to take the uh, bicep and tricep components out of the push and pull and we're going to have an arm day so that's uh, how we arrived at the push pull arms legs the modified push pull legs split and uh, you know ever since then I feel like it's made a couple you know revisions and modifications but you know it's generally been the same so right now being that we're not in the new gym yet and uh, it looks like as of now we'll be in the new gym within like 10 days so not this episode but the next episode we'll be training out of it and I'll make sure we give you a very detailed tour walk you around show you both the new office and the new gym but until we have that um, we have a A and a B for our pull and the leg workouts and then the push workout and the arm workouts the same every single time once we go to the new space uh, the push workout will be A and B too um, why have an A and B workout? You're able to work uh, from different angles or with different apparatuses. And then uh, for him and I, it gives us the ability to not have to try and beat last session's numbers from five days ago. It puts 10 days in between us trying to beat the numbers on that specific exercise, which, you know, is enough time to actually, you know, really progress it or see a drop off if you're dieting and yeah. uh, losing strength. So. Yeah, I, I feel that uh, when we, the better we got, the more we tax ourselves within each exercise, and it was just we weren't recovering, so yeah, it so was just more more rest. Really, is what it is. More rest, and then last year, basically the whole off season and the whole prep, we were able to pull every single back day. Um, you know, this off season, and you know, so far this prep, that hasn't been the case. That's why we have the A and the B pull days now. So, and the A and the B leg days. So. Uh, not looking at it in a vacuum and looking at it, think about it as a 10-day cycle with the push A, the pull, or the uh, push workout, you know, the pull A, the arm workout, and the leg A workouts, you know, the first training cycle, the five-day cycle, on the pull day, we are doing heavy banded rack pulls, so later on in the week, we are going to be doing our quad day with the emphasis, uh, you know, on the compound quad movements, whether it be a pendulum or a hack or something like that. The following week, because we just had that really rough week of both pulling and squatting, the back day has no, uh, you know, um, you know, CNS taxing compounds. We still lower back load with one rowing movement, but other than that, it's all isolation exercises and uh, no uh, deadlifts of any kind. And then subsequently, the B leg workout is the hamstring focus day. So um, no compounds there either because we don't pull on our hamstring day. Uh, neither of us really feel RDLs that much. I feel like it's one of those, you know, like spend a dollar to earn 10 cents kind of exercises for me. So, uh, you know, our hamstring day primarily is just, you know, seated hamstring curls and glute ham raises, uh, maybe with some lunges or, you know, some lying or something like that uh, at the end. So uh, we've been doing that for, you know, a couple months now, and I feel like it's really been a... Uh, you know a sweet spot in terms yeah. of recovery you know while not you know like backing off things and you know we didn't lose any frequency doing it i guess so that, that was the main goal we didn't lose any yeah. frequency but we were recovering better now and i think the way that we got there was we were tracking our lifts and we were either not progressing on those very compound lifts like squats because we were hack squatting or squatting every five days and we were deadlifting every five days and we weren't progressing on those lifts and some weeks we were even uh, missing it so when we 
had A and B workouts, we started progressing every single session going forward. So I think if you track all your lifts and you know really progressive overload, then you come to the correct conclusion. You know, then you know how to modify your volume that way. So I think it's really about keeping track of all your top lifts. So that's the thought process behind the split as of now. Um, you know, to be perfectly honest with you, there's not many things that I can say uh, for sure about a prep because every prep is different, but I can for sure say the split's not going to change and the training intensity is not going to change. Um, in my opinion, training performance being kept high is what makes you lose the most fat. It's what gives you the densest, hardest to look, and it's what preserves the most tissue. You know, what put the tissue on will keep the tissue on. So, you know, the whole prep is... Uh, you know, a, a heavy, heavy focus is placed on, you know, training performance. It's one of the main, you know, indicators on our uh, instrument panel, if you will, in terms of what we need to do with the nutrition and the cardio. You know, noticing big drop-offs or increases in gym performance can tell you a lot about what's going on with your body and uh, what you're doing on prep. So that's something to keep in mind, too. Um, all things that you're only able to do if you're really tracking uh, your lifts and have you know, set workouts and you're not just walking in the gym and, you know, working out, we're training, we're doing something, we're trying to achieve something, so, yeah. Exactly. And for both Olympia and the Tampa prep, it was really easy to lower the volume as we got closer because we checked over those lifts. So for him, when the food got lower and when his recovery went down because he's just, you know, in a huge deficit, we were able to pull the volume out and he was still hitting his numbers on the top lifts all the way to, you know, all the way a week out. That, that's a great point. So, and, and how, how did we do that? How did we keep the strength high? Uh, the volume got lower and lower and lower. Today, you know, you watched us train. We did three hard working sets on the banded incline and we did uh, two or three on the shoulder. We did two. Two. And we did two hard sets on the shoulder press. Um, you know, that's very typical. Um, you know, a lot of times we'll do a third working set on the shoulder press or the second set on either the incline or the shoulder press will be some kind of intensity technique used as well, whether it be a rest pause or a drop set. So, you know, as prep goes on and if, you know, my training performance starts taking a big hit or my recovery is just not there and I start feeling really beat up, we don't back off on the intensity per se within a single set. You know, we're still taking the, the sets that are deemed working sets to failure. We just reduce the number of those. So, you know, as prep wears on, the first thing to go is the intensity techniques. So instead of that second or third set being rest, pause, or drop set, it's just a straight set. And then, you know, as time goes on, if I'm still not recovering from that, we drop a working set. All the way down to, you know, like two weeks out from the show, like pretty much every exercise, we're just doing one really hard working set. Exactly. So, we're able to keep the numbers high doing that and you know just like you know for example just off the top of my head you know my top set of incline today was you know like 455 for 11 um, you know when I'm close to the show I expect to be using that weight still I might be hitting it for seven or eight but just to give you an idea like about you know the, the uh, performance expectations we have you shouldn't have a huge drop off in performance for long periods of time I'm prep you know if you have a drop off due to a zero day or you know like a low stretch that's one thing but if you're consistently you know trending down majorly you need to look at what you're doing in my opinion so um, we'll stop rambling now yeah. uh, I mean that's the advantage of us training together every day yeah. is you know the training the food and everything it's all coincide so you know that's the uh, you know the advantage of you know him and I making all our own calls for me too you know it's uh been training together every day for five years now um, you know no one sees me more than he does uh, you know he's got a very good eye for everything and the fact that not only am I sending you know we're starting to do fasted check-ins now you know a couple times a week I'm posing for him every day after we train you know so it's very very easy for us to make very you know fine-tuned manipulations even at 12 weeks out which I feel is a weapon for sure because you know a lot of people at this point if they're working remotely are checking in once a week and just uh, you know, marching on those orders for seven days. So, you know, it's, I feel like it's definitely a weapon to uh, to have that close of an eye. So looking forward to having that for this prep. It's going to be the first prep I've had it the entire time. So uh, I think we're going to be able to bring the best look we've had thus far. Obviously, that's always the goal, but uh, I definitely think we'll be able to do it. So um, we're ahead. Yeah, now, we're, so. <laughs> we're ahead for sure. So I want to leave you all with this. Um, had a lot of fun doing this. It's been a while since we've done YouTube. Uh, YouTube uh, videos for y'all so looking forward to getting them going uh, consistently again 
So when this one drops from here on out, pretty much for the rest of the year, I can promise y'all there'll be one at least every two weeks from me personally. And then I'm really excited about all the athletes we brought on for the Pro Series, including Brian and Liv. Uh, they're both going to be doing prep series, and then all the athletes we brought on as well will be doing their own content and submitting it. So I'm really looking forward to what the Labrada Nutrition YouTube channel is going to become in the coming months. So keep an eye on the space. It will be very regular content. It will be very informative. It will be exciting. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to having you all along. Um, like I've said, every prep I've done, I've done one of these series, and it's gotten, you know, so much, you know, positive uh, reception and support from it. You know, it's been truly a fun journey to have y'all on, and this one's going to be no different. I'm looking forward to having y'all along with Brian and I every step of the way, uh, showing on not only, you know, my prep, but his prep, Liv's prep, and, you know, everything in between. So if you like this video or you like any of the other content we put out, be sure to subscribe so you can see when it comes out, and we'll see y'all next time.